Cornet. We're here at the Golden Pond for a Golden Pan Out Cooking Exhibition. And this morning we're going to make an, a very simple Italian dish that I don't know what, if any of you ever had it, but it's called aglio olio in Italian, which means garlic and olive oil. And uh, it's simple to make, and it's, I'm sure that most everybody is going to like it. Uh, and uh, from there, we will take on, we'll give you a, an idea of what we're putting in all these ingredients, and uh, we'll, we'll be cooking the spaghetti and uh, getting ready to do what we have to do, and I hope you all enjoy it. And by the way, salute, bon appetit, mangia bene. In here, we have a very expensive olive oil, which I'll describe later. There's about five cloves of sliced garlic, and there's almost three quarters of a can of fillet of uh, anchovies, and the oil from the anchovies, and this, we will cut the French bread in half and brush it on and we'll have garlic bread with our spaghetti. For the sauce for the spaghetti, we use olive oil, use a little bit of uh, olive oil with uh, vegetable oil, but most of it is this bottle of Nova olive oil. This bottle costs about eighteen dollars, and it's the first press of the olives. And if you know anything about olive oil, it's just unbelievably good. And with that, we'll be simmering it up in the stove, and we'll boil the spaghetti separately. When the spaghetti is cooked, we'll put it in a big bowl, and we'll dump all that stuff in with the uh, spaghetti, stir it up, sprinkle the marrow and cheese on it, and feed the people. The spices we use, parsley, basil, and <coughs> when it's all mixed together and everything, we use a little Romano cheese, and that's what we serve. You, you, you put the, you slice the garlic cloves in, in the oil and you let it simmer until the garlic starts turning brown. Now I need a strainer of some kind and I don't know where one is. Well, I'll find you one. Would you your please? Your assistant is here. So in there you have your, in there you have your anchovies. Did you cut up your anchovy or did you leave them? No. You put in the whole filet of anchovy. As this boils, it disintegrates. So what's the name of this dish today, Reno? In Italian, it's called aglio olio. Aglio in Italian is garlic, and olio is olive oil. Well, it smells delicious. Well, I'll try it. This is no good. This is no good. We're trying to make the uh, sauce for the spaghetti, and this has got olive oil. It's got that bottle of olive oil there with the other one. Oh. That, that's eighteen dollars at the north end. Wow, extra uh, virgin olive, olive yeah, oil, Sicily yes. fresh. All you know that means new oil. today? Spaghetti. Oh, right. Come back. <laughs> okay. I love an invitation to eat. And you know it's always good, right, Harry? Absolutely. No. Did you put any seasoning in there or just the garlic and the olive oil? Now we're going to put in some parsley and uh, in fact you can do that. Okay. How much should we put in? Put it in your hand. Put it in my hand? Should I put a glove on? Put it in my hand. <laughs> All right. Tell me when. Okay. 
that was a little basil. This is for the pasta. We're going to make the garlic bread in a minute. Okay. Yeah. Reno, we've had plenty of your red sauce, so what's the history behind this sauce? Well, as you know, most Italians are Catholics. And on Friday, we couldn't eat meat. And this was a staple for every Italian family I've ever known ever since I was a kid. And there's no meat in this, so we weren't breaking any religious rules. And it turns out to be a simple, very tasty spaghetti dish that everybody likes. Great. And it doesn't take much time. And it doesn't take much time or much money. Because in those days, we used to make our own pasta. Mm -hmm. We had olive oil and all the other spices came from the garden. So for just a few bucks, you could feed a family of six or seven. That's nice. And families these days are trying to save money. And they also don't have much time. So to have a meal that doesn't cost a lot or take a lot of time to cook is something that we're always looking to do. There were seven, seven children in my family. My father and mother made nine. My grandfather and grandmother lived with us. That made 11. And there was one person working. So you can see we were pretty poor. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> I don't know if I knew there was such a thing as sliced bread till I was 10 years old. <laughs> my, mother, my mother used to make six loaves of bread every other day. Wow. And uh, we made our own pasta. In fact, very strangely, or uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, in my family, we had a huge garden. We had tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, squash, everything you can think of. It was probably as big as our dining room over there. And we used to have ducks, turkeys, pigeons, rabbits, quail, and every year we raised a pig. And almost everything that we ate came from, from our own farm, off our own garden. And uh, in fact, I went to visit my relatives in Italy five or six times, and my grandmother over there lives six miles from the Adriatic Sea and she's never been there. Wow. So, and they used to have, they had quail and everything and <coughs> it, it was such a, it, it, it's just a, a marvelous, but they, they, just, they used to kill their quail and they spread it down the middle and just spread it out. And all the cooking in, in done in Italy, in the poor sections of Italy, is called a focolare, which is a fireplace. But the fireplace is in the attic. That's where they do all the cooking, because the chimney is right there. And they used to have a spray thing, like you spray deodorant. Mm -hmm. But in there, there was spices that no one would tell you what's in it. And as, as the quail was being grilled, they keep spraying it and turning it. it. It was the most delicious thing you ever tasted in your life. It was just great. So did you ever find out what was in that spray bottle? They, would, they, 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 would would never, they wouldn't even tell you. No. <laughs> <laughs> A funny story about they they raised their own oregano. And when I was about to come home, me and my wife, my Grandmother said to me, I got a bag of oregano for you. I said, gee, that's great. So I get in the plane, we come and go to Boston. <laughs> they go through my bags and they thought, sure, it was marijuana. Oh, no, Reno. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was really something. Well, speaking of your wife, look who just showed up. Hi, Alma. Uh, I'm excited today. You stayed off camera. You said that you grew everything on your farm and in, in your garden. So if you had everything at home, were there things that you needed to go to the market? Well, to there purchase? were a few things that you couldn't grow and, and you didn't have. But I, I neglected to tell you that my father used to make six barrels of wine every, every <laughs> other year. 
and we used to bother with the wine. If you had, uh, for instance, turkeys, but well, we'd give you a bottle of wine, you'd give us a turkey. And it was all this kind of stuff. It, it was, we lived in Little, little, little Italy, and in, in my area, there, there wasn't anybody but an Italian. And everybody shared everything, everybody had a lot of fun. It was, it was just, it was a pool of life, but it was a nice life. So when you, I, I understand that you did a lot of trading in Reno, but when you went to the market, did you trade there or did you purchase? Well, there's a funny story that, we'll, uh, that you'll really understand. We were over there and uh, in the village the way we stay, it's, it's called, uh, oh, I can't remember now. Anyway, the, uh, they were they were they raised a, a sugar beet. You know what a sugar beet is, mm -hmm. okay? And it was time to pick the sugar beets, and there was several old ladies there picking the sugar beets. And my cousin was getting married that day, and she they had her in the house. They were making her up for the wedding, and when it was time to go to the wedding, it was her car and the woman's car that made her up. That's the only two cars in the wedding party. And they went by where the people were picking the sugar beets, and the women looked up and saw two cars, and they stood up and they they thought it was a funeral. They thought it was a funeral. <laughs> and it, it's really something. It's, it, I'll tell you, I'm gonna I'm gonna verify this. If I wasn't as close to my children as I am, I'd have retired in Italy 29 years ago because my cousins. They had, right behind the house, they had a, a, a patch of about 25 feet square. They used to raise peanuts. And they said to me, you know, we'll build you a house here. He says, it'll cost you about $8,000. Wow. That's yeah. very expensive yeah. for us nowadays. It's, Did you ever sell stuff in the market? No, not in the market. Uh, I'm glad my wife is here. She can verify this. Every Tuesday, the, uh, you know how they have the marketplace in Boston? Mm -hmm. Well, every Tuesday at night, at the time when my relatives were, the farmer used to bring all their goods in. It, it was like a, a farm, like a, a, a store, an outside store like they have here. And uh, I, there was a man there with a push cart, and he had the best looking grapes I've ever seen in my life. They were as big as plum and they were every color in the book. And I said, gee, I said, I think I'll take home to my cousin. So I tell them that, give me a bag of grapes. Now, my relatives in Italy, they have vineyards. They raise their own wine. And I brought it home and my niece, uh, I says, you know, watch these, we'll have them for supper. And she kind of gave me a dirty look, but she washed them, she put them in a big silver bowl on the table. There was about eight of us sitting at the table eating. Not one person is touching a grape. And I said, I said, Smet, you people, don't you like grape? And they said, yeah. I said, well, why don't you have some? And my cousin says to me, no offense, cousin. We don't know who raised that, and we don't need anybody else's Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You can flip that out. <laughs> there, there is not a show unless there's something that I have to edit out. <laughs> it, it, it was really, really something. Really so something. Reno, should we stir this at all? Yes, please, please do. And How do we know when it's done? Well, I, I want to shut that off and I'm going to taste it. Okay. Excuse me. Do you want the spoon? Yeah, but it just got to cool off. Yeah, it's going to be hot. It's very hot. Yes. We can dump this. So what do you eat with this dish, Reno? Other than... Um, garlic bread. Just garlic bread? That's about all. Maybe there's other things that I've never had anything with. You have this on a Friday. 
almost every Friday. Reno, uh, let's get the bread going. What are we doing first? First, we're, we're going to split the bread horizontally like this. And then we're going to brush it with a, a, a mixture of olive oil, garlic, and uh, spices. And then we're going to broil it. In, this is a month old. I just picked it up this morning. Wow. Is this, uh, <coughs> what types I, of bread can we use for this, Reno, to make this garlic bread? This is a French baguette that I picked up this morning. No, I want a French stick. You wanted a French stick. I got the wrong bread. No. But we do have Italian bread here. You want to try to do this Yeah, one? I'm going to do that. See if you can cut that down a little bit. Okay, now please watch out. I have visions of that blade going right through. I like to keep all my fingers. Yeah. That's good. All right, Reno, we did it. Yeah, right. Now we'll take this one. This one will be easier to cut. Yeah, it's nice, it fresh Italian bread, which is softer than the French bread. I think you'd use this type of bread for bruschetta. So Reno, we have Italy week coming up next month in July. Are you going to cook something special for that? Well, God willing, I will. <laughs> All right, Reno, I've never done this before, so take me step by step. What okay. was, what's the first step? The first step is this all your nova. This, I will. That extra virgin Italian olive oil. How much are you putting in there, Reno? <coughs> you should have put some more. This is a mixture of olive oil and veggie oil. So you put equal amounts of each? Uh, yeah. Uh, here, put some parsley and... Say when, Reno. That's good. All right, so that was about a teaspoon and a half. Do you ever use fresh parsley? This, this, I chopped up some fresh parsley. It's in there. Oh, and you put it right in your yeah. container. Does it dry out in there? No. No? Let me see. If... And if it doesn't come out fast enough, always screw off the top and just dump it in. Now, I used to grow mint in my garden, and I'd dry it, I'd hang it up and let it dry. Yeah. And then I'd put it in little glass containers. Okay, now I want garlic powder. Garlic powder. Right there. Right here, you know. Okay. Oh, that's a lot. How much? About a tablespoon? At least. Oh, my. I'm so glad that I'm not sleeping with Reno tonight. It doesn't no smell. It doesn't smell? No. All right, we've put in uh, parsley, basil, and salt. Now we're going to add a little bit of pepper, just a, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. That's good. I'll turn that on let it simmer. Do you have a measure, Reno, or are you all just, just dump it in and go by your... Yeah. So how long do I stir this for, Reno? Uh, oh, you, you, you can let it simmer a little while. So let it, let it cook, I don't need yeah. to stir it? No. <laughs> so Reno, the oil for the garlic bread is done. The right. next step is to brush it on. Brush it on. Just doesn't matter how much? Lots? Liberally. Yeah, liberally, but... Try to get the make spices. Sure, make sure there's enough... Uh, around the edges and everything, so that it all... Do you ever put cheese on top of this? No. No? You could if you wanted to. My kids cheese on everything. That smells good, Reno. You added a little butter to this at the end, yeah, I, I noticed. 
here. I'm getting hungry. That's good. My daughter would love this. She would? Yeah. I don't know of anybody that doesn't like garlic bread except our photographer here. <laughs> <coughs> we had enough, Reno. Okay. That's great. You do, you do nice work. I have a great teacher. Well, I don't know about that, but... So, Reno, uh, I'm always learning from you about cooking, but, you know, I went to school for culinary arts in high school, and I love the baking and cook and, and cake decorating part of it. Any chance we'll do any, make any cakes or any desserts? Well, I have someone in my family who is a great baker. And She's my wife, and when I tell her she can bake, she can cook, but her specialty is baking, and she makes some pastries. She makes a thing called the mess, and it is unbelievable. Oh, too bad. I wish she was here today, because someday I'm going to have her on, and she's going to tell you how to cook. But I have to stray away from this for just a minute. She makes a tuna fish, a tuna fish spaghetti sauce. With just tuna fish, and I have yet to find anything better in my life. And whenever she has to cook, I ask her to make this tuna fish sauce. She's really good at it. She's good at a lot of things. She's a, she's a good cook, she's a good helper. I'm going to keep her for a while. That's nice, Reno. So in the future, we'll make this tuna fish sauce and maybe do some baking? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. All right. I'm uh, glad we got the OK for that. She, she'll, she'll do the baking. I'll do the cooking. We can do it at the same show. She can be making the pastry, and I'll be making something else. OK. OK? Sounds good. So Reno, the water's boiling. And we're ready to put the pasta in. Should we break it in half before we put it in? Yeah, if you want to get slapped by every Italian in the middle. <laughs> okay, I, I won't be doing that then. Let them, let them soften up a little bit before it's going to turn. <sighs> okay. <laughs> uh, light, light. That looks delicious. About seven minutes. So Reno, about seven minutes on the pasta? Yeah. Does that mean it'll come out al dente? It just the, just the way you want it. What does al dente mean? Dente is teeth. Okay. I'm going to break nice, my teeth on the pasta? Nice, nice and chewable. Oh, chewable. I can chew it. Yeah. Reno, in order to tell if it's done, do we take it out and throw it at the wall? <laughs> no, we don't. We don't? No. I'll give you, I'll give you a tip. How's the bread? Yeah. If they go by and hear it that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's good. The spaghetti's al dente, Reno, and we took it out of the water. Now what? Now dump it in gently all over the place. Gently all over the place. Oh, right now, stop it. Get a spoon and mix all that stuff. Okay. Do you want the tongs for anything? Yeah, I need the tongs. I have to mix that. Okay, just dump it right on. Yeah. Wow, See. that looks beautiful. Oh, boy. It's part, it's part of the Here you go, Reno. Thank you. Don't be afraid to dump it. What kind of cheese is this, Reno? Romano. Romano? Do you ever use Parmesan? Yeah, we do. But for this, Romano. 
Okay, ready to go. So then you Just a minute, folks. It's Diving Driving time, and we've got a great Wester for you today. Diving Driving is a new program featuring the H-Camp staff's favorite B-movies. We hope you enjoy these treasured films of yesteryear. Even if we don't get paid, there ain't no job we train. We're hard and break the same to stay on the Santa Fe. So check out the H-Camp TV website at hcamp.tv for movie games and showtimes. Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. A very special dessert done by a woman from Hopkinton that yes. I've started using regularly. We had your residents participating both as vendors and as shoppers. And that, oh, was, that was so, so much so fun. fun. Uh, real Hopkinton Housewives, if you're on Facebook, you will have a blast. Thanks for joining Cheers, us. Cheers, guys. Thank great. you. Yeah, good to see you see too. See you guys. Bye. -bye.